We are going to begin by reading uh, Luke 5. Would you please rise if you're able to do so? (coughs) Now it happened while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he had got into one of the boats with Simon's and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do this as you say and let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came, and they filled both of the boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to land, they left themselves and they followed him. The word of the Lord. Robin, can I borrow your book? Today you received a communal book. Okay. We will be, um, I'm asking you in June, it's 30-day devotion. A 30-day devotion. It's start, I'm going to ask that we begin on June 1st, that everybody make a commitment to have this devotion starting June 1st, doing every day, and do the things instructed. Mark Geppert, dear friend of mine, a prayer walker, God's used him to win millions and millions of people to Jesus Christ throughout the world. It's by prayer. And they took this book, and they saw this book, and it, it really blessed them in Tibet, I think it was, and it just brought some continuity. So on June 1st, I'm asking that this body of believers will gather together in one accord and pray, 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 okay? So, um, all right. Let's say together. I'm emphatically in love with my right position in God and radically pursue it. One more time. I'm emphatically in love with my right position in God and radically pursue it. Today I want to show you guys how to radically pursue it and what this means. Today what I want to do is I want to show you something. Experiencing God in Scripture. And I want to give you a tool that will allow you to be intimate with God. Be intimate with God. As I said in the prayer, I believe this is one of the most important sermons I've ever given. I invited a whole lot of people to be here today. Because I think it's that important. Because I want to be honest with you guys. I don't want to beat anybody up here, but what I'm about to say. I look at Psalm 63. I'm speaking for Rusty Wills, and I bet you I could put your name in every one of these. In Psalm 63, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. Everything I got, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you like in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory and your love's better than life. Can we say we've done that? You know what I'm saying? (coughs) That's supposed to be how we're to be. And what I recognize, the Church of America, and we're part of the Church of America, we're not very radical for Jesus. You all know that. I don't have to say it. We, so we read our books. We do our stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I, I get scared when I look at the last time. He says, the church of Laodicea, which is addressing us here today. It's an end time church. He says, you're lukewarm. And what does he do with lukewarm? Spit him out. You can't be hot or cold. You've got to be sold out. And I believe we haven't been sold out. And I'll start with here. It's absolutely sold out. I look at the early church. 
<coughs> and I was overwhelmed by the early church. I mean, these people, imagine being persecuted. You had to leave Jerusalem. And as you left Jerusalem, you didn't have a caravan. You didn't have a, a, a U-Haul. You had nothing but maybe a knapsack on your back at best. And you carried everything you had out. And the first thing you did is tell about Jesus. Why is that? Because they believed. They, they were sold out to Jesus Christ. They were sold out. They were radical for Jesus. And what's the key of it all? Prayer. We looked at the Acts prayer one time, and in Acts 4, and it said they, they prayed boldly. They boldly that they could share their faith. They just wanted, and what, they, they didn't care about the persecution. God, we just want to go out and share Jesus. And what allowed them to do it? Because of their prayer life. Everything had to do with their prayer life. And let's be honest, most of our prayer life is radically weak. We know that. I'm not beating anybody up, it just is, okay? We might have a little words of prayer to God bless me today, I'll be so and so, and that's the extent of it. You think we're going to be moving God through the power of God through that kind of prayer life? No. It's not going to happen. There's little power in the church today because there's little prayer in the church today. You offer a Super Bowl party, you offer a church dinner, people will come, but you offer a prayer gathering, only a couple. Just the way it is. Because we just don't think it's that important. Leonard Ravenhill once said, he said, the reason, he, he said this, and I really liked it. He said, the greatest of man is determined by his, the greatness of man is determined by his prayer life. And he's right. So what I want to do today, again, I'm not beating anybody up. I'm not beating anybody up. What I, I just want you to, this is the reality of where we are. Okay. I want to be, on, I want to be part of a church that's on fire. Amen. I want to be about a church that just eats and drinks Jesus. That we come and talk. We're not talking about what happened yesterday, all the weather. Or the, I want to talk about, be able to talk about Jesus. Hey, Andy, what's going on in your life? How's Jesus blessing you today? Robin, what's God been saying to you? That's how we all want us to be able to talk. We don't get there. Why don't we get there? Because God isn't doing anything because we're not seeing him. We can talk about the weather, but we can't talk about what God's been doing. And the reason is because our prayer life is so weak. So, with that said, I believe God has shown me some things. And I believe God has shown me some some things that have really radically changing me. And uh, I pray it will radically change you. And I pray that you'll take what's been given today and you'll begin to apply it. Okay? Now, with that said, today you notice, we be I read the book of uh, Luke, okay? I'm gonna s I'm, this is the kind of reading the Gospels when you're reading Jesus' stories. It's, very, it's not in your packet, okay? I didn't put this one in your packet. But we did this on, on Palm Sunday. But you notice how Luke 1 said this. Luke 5, 1 said this. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. Now we're going to make this personal. Okay, now listen to, the, look, listen to how God has shown me how to read the gospel stories. And Luke 5, change it a little differently. Now, Jesus, it happened while the crowd was pressing around you and listening to you speak the word of God, you were standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And you saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And Jesus, you got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. And you asked him to put out a little way from the land. And you sat down. And you began teaching the people from the boat. When you had finished speaking, Jesus, you said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Well, Simon answered and said to you, Master, we worked hard all night and we caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at your feet, Jesus. And he began saying, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which had been taken. 
And so also was James and John and sons of Zebedee. They were partners with Simon. And Jesus, you said to Simon, do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and they followed you. Do you see a difference? See, when you read it first time I read it, it was now it happened while the crowd is pressing around him. It's personal. It's, it's impersonal. It's out there. How many times we read the scripture and yeah, that's a nice story. But what we just did here is we took the word of God and we made it personal. Jesus, it happened while the, press, the crowd was pressing towards you. You said to them. And so I'm identifying with Jesus. I'm telling the story back to Jesus, what he did. That's huge difference. Why? Because I'm entering into the story then. In Luke 4, I'm only going to read the first line of it, okay? The first, in Luke 4, 31, it literally says, it says, and he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them in the Sabbath. Now, that's nice, but imagine we make it personal. And Jesus, you came down to Capernaum, and to the city of Galilee, and you were teaching them in the Sabbath. So I'm telling Jesus what he did. And when I'm telling Jesus what he did, because that's what the Word of God says, what happens to me? I begin to draw into the story. Does this make sense? Okay, so you can take any gospel story that Jesus happens, and you can make it personal. You can draw, it, draw in, all right? Okay, now... This is the part that we're going to get to today. And this is the part that's really touching me. In, John, in Jesus, in, in 2 Corinthians 6, he said, I'm a living temple. Does he say you're a living temple? Okay. He also says, he says, I will dwell in you and walk among you. So where is he? And where else? Among us, right? He makes it very clear, doesn't he? So the fact is, he dwells in me and walks among me. Now, we also know that Jesus is called the Word of God, right? He's the living Word, is that right? So let's take hold of that. So if, when we read the Bible, who's speaking to us? Jesus. Can, can you say, who's speaking to us? Jesus. So what you have there is a packet. And we're going to walk through that today. And I'm going to tell you, okay, I have basically taken the gospel, I've called the gospel of James. We're not going to go through the whole gospel of James, okay? But this is what we've done here. God has shown me this, and you can ask Linda. I'm sitting there on my, uh, my computer, and I, I don't know, I, I'm just putting together this, God is putting this to me, giving it to me, giving it to me, and we're writing it out. And so there's two ways to pray. What you have in this package today is that first you have the fonts, the smaller font. That's the regular text. You go to your Bible, you can read the text. But then what you have is the second font is a little, a little more darker. It's a 16 bold font. It's Jesus talking to me. Put your name in there. And then the third part is me praying back to Jesus, what we just read. What I'm going to suggest you guys do, and I would like to make, have you make a commitment that you will do this. Take the first chapter of James tomorrow, read the original text, then go read Jesus talking to you, then read the, you praying back to Jesus what the text says. It will transform you. Okay. Well, I'm going to take you a couple highlights today of this. All right. So I'd like you to turn to page 8 in your package. Page 8 in the package that you have today. The page numbers at the top of the page. On top of the page. Now, I need to confess something this week. This week I was with some people. This one person that we were with is sometimes ditzy. Anybody you know that's ditzy? Okay. And do you find sometimes that, that you can, I mean... You speak things about them that maybe you shouldn't be speaking. Okay. Now I'm saying this because I was with a, somebody and they started talking about this person. And I might 
they have a tendency to maybe join them. Yeah, that person's da 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 da. God said, stop. And why did he tell me to stop? Because that morning, I had gone through this James text. Now, let me tell you, I did this myself. I didn't have Linda proof for this, okay? So please forgive me, okay? But you're going to see some errors in this. That's the reason I handed off that separate page, because there's too many errors on that page. Okay. But I want to put my name here, and I want you to just, and just the Jesus talking to me. Say that with me. Jesus talking to me. That's what the Word of God is. Because what happens, we often read the Word of God and go, that's nice. And we don't personalize it. See, when I'm thinking, and I'm seeing Jesus speaking to Rusty Wills, and he's standing right here, Jesus, the Holy God, the righteous God, the everlasting God, speaking to me. He died for me. Guess what I need to start doing? Paying a listen, that's right. So it's pretty simple. So I'm showing you kind of what God's been giving me. And verse 2. Rusty, I know that you stumble in many ways. If you did not stumble in what you say, you are a perfect man, able to bridle your whole body as well. Rusty, if you put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they will obey you, you direct their entire body as well. Rusty, look at the ships also. Though they are very great and are driven by strong winds, they are directed by a very small rudder, wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. So also, Rusty, your tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire? Rusty, your tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. Your tongue, Rusty, is set among your members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of your life and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But Rusty, no one can tame your tongue. It is restless and evil full of deadly poison. With it, you bless your Lord and Father, and with it, you curse men who have become made, made in the likeness of God. Rusty, from your, your same mouth come both fresh blessing and cursing. Rusty, these things ought not to be like this. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Rusty, can a fig tree produce olives or a vine pr produce figs? Nor can a water produce fresh. Is that reading it? Does that make sense? That begins to cut you to the core when you put your name in there, huh? Let's move to James 4. Let's go to page 10. James 4, bottom of the page, the bold print. Oh, Jesus, you continue to give me your word by saying, Rusty, what's the source of quarrels and conflict among you? Do any of you have quarrels and conflicts? Okay. So listen what Jesus is saying to you. Jesus, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you, personally and corporately? Rusty, be honest. Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? Rusty, how often you lust and do not have? So you commit murder or get angry. Rusty, how often you are envious and you cannot obtain? So you fight and you quarrel. Rusty, how often you do not have because you do not ask. And Rusty, how often you ask and you do not receive. Because Rusty, you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. Rusty, when you are in this state, 
you are an adulteress. Rusty, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, Rusty, if you wish to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Or do you not think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? Now, Rusty, listen carefully. God jealously desires the spirit that he has made to dwell in you. But Rusty, God gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, Rusty, submit yourself to God. Rusty, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Rusty, hear this clearly. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Rusty, cleanse your hands when you sin. Rusty, purify your hearts. Rusty, you are at times double-minded. Rusty, be miserable and mourn and weep when you sin. Rusty, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to glory. Rusty, I want you to humble yourself in my presence, the presence of the Lord, and I will exalt you. This is pretty good, isn't it? Go to James 5, page 14. Folks, this will change your life because this is about then meditating. It's meditating, resting in what is being said. It's not saying words. Now, it, it begins to speak. I, I find sometimes when I'm in the presence of God, my right arm starts shaking. And I'm in, I'll just begin weeping as I'm going through this. Okay. Go to verse 14, chapter 14. I'm sorry, page 14, chapter 4, verse three, 13. Verse 13. You see, one of the greatest problems we have in the church today, I'll, I'll tell you right now, is that when we're sick, we don't ask people to pray for us. It is a problem. It's a problem. How dare we do this? I appreciate Sister Sheila. She'll call me up and goes, Pastor, can you pray for X, Y, Z? Joanne's done that many times. What does the Word of God tell us to do? Let's listen carefully. Rusty, are you suffering? <coughs> then you must pray. Are you cheerful? You are to sing praises. Rusty, if or when you are sick, you must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over you, anointing you with oil in my name, the name of the Lord. Rusty, know this, that the prayer offered in faith will restore you and others who are sick. And I, the Lord, will raise you up. <coughs> and if you have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Therefore, Rusty, confess your sins to others and pray for others so that you may be healed. Rusty, know this, that the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Now, when you hear, we can read the word or we can imagine and see Jesus speaking it to us. Does that make a difference? It does, doesn't it? Now, take the sheet. Uh, that I, that's separate, this John 15. The one I have in this pamphlet I butchered. I didn't have my, anybody, anyways, that's my, on me, okay? But what I want to take a couple minutes now, and I want you to say this to yourself, okay? Say it slowly. I will tell you, the other day I met with a missionary, Derek Seif. And I began sharing this to, with him. He put his name in this one I have before you, and tears began. You could see he was choked up. This is Jesus talking to him. This is Jesus talking to you. So let's take a few moments and put your name. Read it slowly and digest it. Hearing Jesus speak to you, what does this do to you? How does it convict you? To the heart. To the heart. 
what he's saying to you. Verse 16, Rusty, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Go up to one and two up there. Rusty, if any branch in me does not bear fruit, he will be taken away. So what's he calling us to do? Abide in him. So we take this word and we rest in it. And we let him speak to us. <coughs> because when you know Jesus is speaking to Rusty Wills personally, to Rob and Mackie personally, that's what he's saying, isn't it? Turn to page 17. Romans 12. How often do we take things, I like that, but I don't like that? I like that one. That's good for me, but this one I don't like. So I ignore it. But look at what Jesus is saying in Romans 10, 12. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you get the idea. Robin, let your love be with hypocrisy. Debbie, abhor what is evil. Teresa, cling to what is good. Stephanie, be devoted to others in brotherly love. Linda, give preference to others in honor. Mike, do not lag behind in diligence. Joanne, be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Mary, rejoice in hope. Carl, persevere in tribulations. Debbie, be devoted to prayer. Woody, contribute to the needs of the saints. Jeremy, practice hospitality. Christina, bless those who persecute you. <coughs> April, bless and do not curse. Floyd, rejoice with those who rejoice. Floyd, reap with those who weep. Doug, be the same mind towards others. Andy, don't have a haughty in mind. Rusty, associate with the lowly. Rusty, don't be wise in your own estimation. Woody, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. You can see what this can do to you, huh? Does this make sense to you folks? This has potential to change your life. And then what you do in a Romans text like that, you hear Jesus speak like that. Now listen clearly. Listen closely. You take it back and you pray it back to him. You say, Lord, let my love be without hypocrisy. Lord, let me abhor what is evil. Lord, let me to cling to what is good. Holy Spirit, lead me to guide me to be devoted to others in brotherly love. God, let me be devoted to prayer. So you take it back and you pray it back to God. And then you take it and you let him carry you. You're crying out to God. Folks, I'm going to tell you again, you, this church and the church of America is going to do nothing until we learn to pray. If I was a great organizer and stuff, we could build, I heard one guy say, if you're a great leader in the sense of organizer, you can build a great church. By your personality, get, get live music, do this and that and everything. People will flock. But how do you great, build a great church on our face? And it's taken this. This is a tool that you can use. Remembering Jesus is talking to you. Turn, turn, turn to the page, please. Turn the page. Turn to page 18. Um, it says, this is Jesus talking to you from Scripture. That First John. Let's read that silently to ourselves, okay? To Jesus. Jesus is speaking to me. to do to live the will uh, live forever
do the will of the God. That's what it says, right? Rusty. If, if you, Rusty, do the will of God, you will live forever. Okay. So you sit and rest in that. Okay, God, am I doing your will, God? I want to do your will. Help me, dear God, and do your will. And you just, you just take it and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Joanne. That's right. Because without his help, we can't do anything. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. That's a good word. Because we can't do any of it, can we? We can't do it. That's the reason we prayed back to him like that, right? Help me, help me, help me. Because you tell me. So as you're reading it, say yes, you know, uh, in agreement. Say yes, Lord. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's so simple, but yet you ask it because you have not because you ask it. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. That's right. Let's do one last one. Yeah, Linda. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. And see, this is exactly what God is saying to us here. I mean, it says gather together. Okay, that means we need to be together. Okay, I mean, it says in Scripture, do that. Rusty, be with other Christians. That's what it's saying. Okay, yeah. You know, how many people don't come to church? I mean, I'm driving here this morning. I, my heart's weeping. People cutting grass. They're in their boats. Taking, I mean, what are you guys doing? They're all, I mean, every one second, somebody's dying. They're going to hell. The top priority in life is him and him alone. This is all going away. So what begins to happen if we start capturing his heart and then we go, let God lead us as we go and be that light and share faith as God opens the door for us to do so. Okay? That's right. That's absolutely right. That's right. You, we will change. This body of believers will change. Because you're going to change. And you're going to have a hunger and a thirst and a hunger and a thirst and a hunger and thirst for God. Because the more that you see Jesus speaking into you and you meditate and ponder what he just said, as you said, Joanne, you take, oh, yes, Lord, I want to do that, Lord. Help me to do that. You see, when we start, oh, i got to do it, that's not God. I want to. And I have a hunger and I want to, I want to be obedient. Now, we may be apprehensive, don't get me wrong, but God, help me in the f fear that I have so I can do this. You can be apprehensive, but it's still going to convict you. Yeah, that's right. Say it louder. It's going to convict you. That's right, going to convict us. Yeah, if you're truly in the weeds, then you have no choice but to be convicted. That's right, that, that's right, Sheila. You put our own name there, it can't help but convict you, right? I mean, look at the last one on page 19, Philippians. Let's say out loud, Verse 3 together, but put your name there, okay? It's on the last page, 19. Okay, Philippians, the, bat, the last statement, the last statement. Debbie, it's on the bottom left hand, right there. Okay. Everybody got it? Okay. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Rusty, do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rusty, in humility of mind, regard others as better than yourselves. Let's stop there, just for a second. Somebody maybe, we ministered to yesterday, somebody's being an idiot. Oh, dear God, forgive me. Okay, that's how we speak, isn't it? That's how we speak. What are we supposed to do? See them better than ourselves, right? It's about honoring. Let's, let's read the whole thing together. It's verse 4, which put our own name, right? Rusty, do not look at your own personal interests, but also to the interests of others. Rusty, I want you to have the same attitude in yourself, which was also in me, Christ Jesus. Rusty, I existed in the form of God. Yet I did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Rusty, please know I emptied myself, taking the form of a bondservant, and was made in the likeness of men. Rusty, I was found in appearance as a man. Rusty, 
I humbled myself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Rusty, I was obedient to even death on a cross. Rusty, it was for this reason God highly exalted me and bestowed on me the name which is above every name. Rusty, at my name, the name of Jesus, your knee along with every knee will bow to those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And Rusty, your tongue along with every tongue will confess that I, Jesus Christ, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I mean, I got, my, I got goosebumps. So what are we going to do with this? I'm sorry, did you say something, Carol? Oh, read it and do it. Jeremy, what does this do to you? He says, in, 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 he says, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We hear that and go, well, that's for somebody else. Rusty, go make disciples of all nations. Rusty, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Rusty, I am with you always, even until the end of time. Well, you know what? That just, that's Jesus speaking to me. Huh? You know, the, I looked at one in them. Um, or was it, uh, excuse the notes. Um, in 1 Timothy, it says, Rusty, I urge you with prayers and petitions and thanksgiving, you, you, beha you pray on behalf of all men. Rusty, pray for kings and all those who are in authority. Rusty, you do this so you may live a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Rusty, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, your Savior. Rusty, I desire all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Wow. So what that does, for me, it goes, okay, God, enhance my prayer life. How many start praying for those who are lost, those who are hurting? See, again, I'm going back to folks. We are at the end times. I cannot say this enough. And that most people are going to hell. And most people in the church are. And I hate to say that, but there's no passion, there's no zeal. We're living life like the Laodicea. And Jesus said, I spit you out of my mouth. I don't know about you, but I want to be fire. And the only way to be fire is being in the Word of God and praying back the Word. And yes, Lord, I swear, yes, Lord. You cannot say no to the Lord. He says, if you love me, Rusty, you will obey my commands. Well, I don't have time right now. Lord, I want to do A, B, C. No, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. You'll be with other Christians. You'll go to study. You'll do this because you love me. It's not optional if you're a Christian. That's right. First time of the day. Martin Luther used to say, the busier I get, the more I have to pray. Three hours a day, that man would pray in the morning. Three hours a day. Because he understood. It had to start with him on his face before Almighty God. That's absolutely right. Make sure, make, yeah, make sure you get that to me, okay? Bring it tonight. I'm going to type it up, send it to everybody, okay? Because that's the reason all the stuff I've been handing out to you guys, I believe, I believe, I believe.
That's right. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. So what else? So so what commi- what kind of commitment are you guys going to make out of this? We make a commitment to go through James. Make a commitment to go through James. Okay. I've done a couple of other books. I've done Colossians. I've done I think First Peter, and I'm working on others. I'll be glad to send those to you if that would be helpful. Okay. Please correct mistakes so I can make it better. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Okay, but but seriously, I mean, but this I, I believe this is a way. For, I, I believe if you start put doing this, you're you're going to change. 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 And God's going to do supernatural things that you don't you can't even imagine happening. So so again, the book. Going back to the book, we'll start this June first. June first, okay. We'll go through the month, month of July, uh, June together with this, and then start this James one that we're talking about. And keep going through that. And as I get it, would, would you want me to send them on your email? Would, I mean, no offense. It costs a lot of money to do what I did with this, okay? It costs a lot of money, okay? Um, but I just felt we had to do this. I want people to have this in their hands so you can see how to do this. Because you can do this yourself. You don't have to have this. But it gives you an idea. So anytime you see something, you go, G- God, Jesus, Rusty, whatever it might be. Rusty, be devoted to prayer. That's what it says in Scripture. We see, be devoted to prayer, yeah, yeah. Rusty, be devoted to prayer. Guess what it does? It stabs me in the heart. <laughs> okay? That's right. It changes my thinking. That changes my thinking. That's right. Yeah, Woody, please. Uh, you know, the Bible right now in 15. Yeah. I think that's got powerful key verses on it. You know, some, some uh, people will say, well, that's not talking. It's just talking to the first person. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Because th- this is a tool that we can teach people. Pray that God will give me an opportunity to give this out, okay? In fact, you know what God did? I'm the coordinator for the March for Jesus that's going to happen next May. That means I'm going to be out in churches talking to prayer leaders. Isn't it interesting how God just gave us this? Because this is all God. I mean, this had nothing to do with Rusty. Rusty wouldn't have thought something like this. This is too creative. He he just set up, Sonny. He set he set me up. Okay, set us up. But I share it with you folks first as my precious love. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And I want us to crow to get that fire. That fire. Fire. And. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah, that's right. So we can take all that stuff, right? And so we start praying for other people, you know, et cetera. Et cetera. Again, oh, God, I'm excited what God's going to do. I'm excited what God's doing, okay, and it's going to do. Okay. But you know who he's going to do it through? That's right. <coughs> that's right. Do it through us. All of us. Okay. You, you know how he, he used me yesterday? You were... Yeah, talked about me. I don't talk to people. I don't. I don't say a lot of stuff to people. But during the songs, there were certain songs that I sang that, and of course, what he said after you know in between our songs, um, I actually asked anybody there that if they really wanted to talk to me about becoming a Christian, that if they came up to me, I would pray for them. And I, I told them they didn't even have to come to me there. If they were afraid to come to me there in the room that I'd be downstairs and I'd be in a place where you could drive right up and see me you can talk to me there but I don't say that stuff and I mean he really really was opening the door open the door for you huh? yeah for good people deal. good yeah. deal good deal okay folks thank you so much I'm glad that uh, this does make sense though okay Mike this makes sense to you today yeah um, I, I just want 
I just want people to know Jesus. I don't want us to live casually. Casual Christianity is no Christianity at all. You're either sold out or you're not. If you're not sold out, now there's a process of growing, okay? There's a process of growing. It's a process, but you have the heart to grow. If we're just doing it for, yeah, I did my job, da, 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 no. All right? So let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you so much. You are glorious. You are good. We thank you that you're by your word of God, the scriptures, the word of God. It it is holy. It's righteous. It reveals Christ to us. Jesus, it's you speaking forth to us. And there's this message you have to give us and each one of us, God. I thank you that you gave us this understanding of James and and other things that we went through today. God, to do it individually. And then you give us that devotional dealing with community. So, God, it's both. We have to grow individually, God, and that moves us then into community, God, and the need for one another. God, we need one another. Oh, God, forgive us that we're isolated Christians. Forgive us, God, that we live in our little cocoon by ourselves. God, we need one another. You said, you said, spur one another on to meet. Rusty, spur one another on to meet together. God, that's what we're called to do. God, I thank you for the prayer closet. You want us to meet you. You want to meet us. God, I thank you for this, the way that you're showing us how to take the word of God and bring it back and read it back. You speaking to us. And God, it's you speaking to us. He said, if you abide in me, you're going to prune us and you're going to grow us. That's what you do. I'm asking Father God that we'll take this word Meditate on it. Surrender to it. Asking you, God, to change us to be like the word of God speaking through the power of the Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for what you're going to do. We have complete faith and confidence you're going to do it. You're going to win many souls through each one of us here. You're going to make us stronger in you. You're going to allow us to do things we never imagined before. But it's not us, it's you doing it. Because you're moving us to surrender to you. We love you. We thank you. We honor you. Thank you for our worship today, God. Thank you for our time together today. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in his peace, folks. Go in his peace. I don't really think we should sing this song. Oh, okay. This song is, I think this song just goes with what you were talking okay. about. Let's it, it is actually a prayer. That's not it. Oh, yeah, it is. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain near the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river Jesus. 
Lord, it's all on the cross. It's just denying ourselves, picking up your cross, our cross every day. And I pray, Father God, that as we go through this process that you're teaching us, we'll just get closer and closer to you, understanding the cross and the grace that you've given us. We're emphatically in love with the right position we have in you. And we're going to radically pursue it by your grace. We go in peace.